Hello, viewers, and hello, Joe Bevan from Desperate Journalist. How are we going? Hello. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. I'm just as good as I was when we last spoke, which was a moment ago. Breaking the illusion. In a while. <laughs> So, um, we're going to talk about um, what you're scared of. Um, it's a song from your album. This is the question. So, there's another spoken word bit during the code of the track. How do you feel about doing narration for an audiobook? Because your voice seems to be quite... It's, it's good. It tells stories. Have you ever thought of doing that as a thing outside a desperate journalist? I haven't, actually. <laughs> Um, I always feel really self-conscious when I read things aloud. I was actually um, uh, at a family thing where there was a very small child um, trying to, and everyone was sort of trying to calm her down. Um, and I tried reading from like a children's book to her and I just felt really awkward. About it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh God, I'm doing this like mum voice. This is really weird. Um, so, I mean, I think I'd, I prefer talking over lots of music I mean, in my previous band, I did a lot of speaking rather than singing. I remember when I was in with Simon um, called If. Um, so I, I quite enjoy doing that. Um, but if it's just my voice on its own talking, I get really self-conscious, which is odd. Oh, intriguing. Because um, I've got like a, a secondary question alongside that, because... I don't know if it's intentional, but I feel like there's this whole never mind thing happening when it comes to your vocals at certain points. It seems to be intentionally buried. Like sometimes I'm getting little peaks of words coming up. Is, mm. it, is it a secret what you've decided to record and put on many, many, many CDs? Or <laughs> can you tell me the truth? What are you saying? <laughs> um, I mean, it's all, the whole song is about, um, it's sort of about like um, bad memories sort of suddenly hitting you. Um, so, the spoken word bit is essentially kind of like a stream of consciousness thing. Um, I mean, it's probably quite impenetrable to anyone who doesn't live completely inside my brain. <laughs> um, so, it, it, yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of trying to evoke that feeling of um, kind of like almost, almost like a sort of triggering trauma thing. Um, and that being buried slightly or kind of coming up and going down in the mix um, as well as all the kind of wailing is supposed to um, have that emotional effect. Um, and I mean, it, it's, I'm really, really impressed with how Rob um, mixed it because he didn't know any of this, but he just kind of intuitively realized that that's exactly what I was trying to convey um, and did an amazing job mixing it. Um, right. So yeah, it's sort of conceptual, but um, also, I think also, I mean, from a purely kind of sonic aesthetics perspective, it would just be too much if it was just everything like. Yeah. Uh, and then also talking um, and loads of guitars and loads of more. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it hopefully still sounds like hell, which is what's supposed to sound. <laughs> but um, not like hell in a pretty way. <laughs> That's the vibe. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Put that on a t-shirt, that works for me. <laughs> um, is there a particular line in this song that you believe um, represents um, a whole gamut of the emotions that are on display? Ooh. Or are they all just like little parts that work together to form a whole? I mean, I think they are all little parts that work together. Um, I mean, I'm... I think the mid the bridging bit with the sun too bright being repeated. Um, I think that's quite a good um, indicator of something that you know it, it's it's bridging the gap between sort of being slightly ruminatory and then everything sort of collapsing on you. Um, and hopefully that will that kind of conveys that um, you know innocuous initially um, observation then kind of spiraling and dragging you down. Um, so yeah, I think if I was gonna choose one line, it would be that, um, yeah. Um, but otherwise they are all um, quite fragmented bits. Okay, cool. Second of three questions. Um, at the risk of dispelling some alchemical magic, 
where references such as Bjork or Pulp voiced during any stage of the song's creation? No. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> we never, like, I mean, unless there's something that really, really sounds like another song, nobody really um, talks about. It's weird, we, we, we never really talk about what we're doing, we just kind of do it. <laughs> and I think we've got to the stage, it's, it's a nice place to be, we've got to the stage as a band that we all sort of intuitively know how each other works and how each other, um, I mean, emotionally and uh, musically. So we just kind of all get our heads down and do our thing. And it just naturally, thankfully, quite often just locks together really well um but yeah there's like virtually no discussion on about lyrics or um yeah I don't know yeah unless there's something particularly obvious we want to avoid like you know this bit sounds way too much like x song or something yeah, yeah. um we'll either play it up which sometimes we have done or um it gets cut um or we'll try and sort of um write something around it that makes it slightly more different and more us um, but yeah, no, no one mentioned Bjork or Pulp. Okay. It's interesting to you say Pulp because I was I didn't think that at all, but it does sort of make sense then. Oh yeah. Um, mm. I mean, there is uh, maybe it's a natural thing. Maybe it's something that you have acquired <laughs> over time. Um, but when you do do these spoken word moments um, in your songs, I can't but help but think about say Jarvis Cocker doing that speech in I Spy. It's just that thing that yeah. you, I, in my opinion, you've kind of unconsciously taken from that aspect of the band. I think I probably have. I mean, there's every single thing that I do is sort of, you know, there, there is that Kurt Cobain quote of, um, I use bits and pieces of other people's personalities to make my own. I think that's just like everybody does that if you're in a band in this day and age, yeah. especially. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, when I first, I can't remember when the first time I did a sort of speaky bit in, um, I think it was actually for Personality Girlfriend, I did the talky bit in that. Um, it, I, was, I couldn't stop thinking about the Long Bonds, which is obviously um, a band who are very, very inspired by pulp. Um, so once, I mean, it was after I'd written it, but I was like, it's really, really tempting to just go like, there's a train at the station, it's leaving this morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's unconsciously just like seeped in. It's healthy though, because I mean, at least being in uh, a position of creating art, you can exercise that aspect of yourself, have it recorded, and every now and again, when you realise that, you can objectively, you know, understand it and move on. Whereas, possible uh, people who aren't given the ability or the confidence to create stuff won't be able to you know, discombobulate themselves from, the, you know, the mass media uh, tirade of maximum inducing sorrow that is around us, you know. So <laughs> I, I can't say that again, but I hope it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have a final musical kind of question. It's a little bit nerdy, but it's for people who might need to know. There's this fuzz bass bit that basically Simon does in like towards the end of the song. What pedal is he using? Is this for the bass nerds that may want to know? Oh God, I can't remember. <laughs> um, uh, I know that we did something really weird with it. I think we played, so I think we, I think it might just be like a big muff or something. Okay. But it was played through an amp and then recorded and then something was, I think maybe Rob did something with the settings and it, then it was put through, I, I'm not the person to ask, but okay. it was some kind of um, like a ring modulator or something to okay. make it really like dirty sounding, but I might be talking complete. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. If, if Simon's watching this, then look, I'll DM you and maybe there could be another trilogy of questions. Who knows? Yes, I think that's probably the best course. <laughs> when, when people were doing things with pedals, I just kind of stood there, like looking at the window, going like, "Oh, that's cool," but not having any idea what was going on. Fair enough. Um, it sounds so. very much like myself at a recording session. Joe, where can people buy your record? They should know by now, but let's tell them anyway. Um, it's I mean, 
please go to our band camp because um, we make the most money off that. Um, and uh, it's also available on iTunes, uh, many other online music outlets, Apple Music, Fierce Panda. Um, and yeah, I think some independent record shops, but I can't remember which. So this is really helpful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, look it up. Indeed. Thank you so much, Joe. You are excellent. May you continue singing and just all these choruses of angels that seem to sing through you. I'm hoping that oh. they're happy. <laughs> Thanks. Blimey. What a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Have a lovely day. Bye bye. Thanks. You too. Bye.